So where are we up to? In the very first clip, I basically explained that I started off with you and the state. That when you have anything to do with the state, there's you and the state. So you want to use the roads? Okay. You're dealing with the state. Your parents take you to a public school? You're dealing with the state. Well, what's the difference between the government and the state? Well, let's, let's answer that now. The difference between the government and the state is the government is the people working in the government. And if you're living in a democracy where politicians come and go, the state doesn't come and go. The, the government officials fit within the framework of the state. And part of that is democracy, that every so often we're going to have elections and we decide who goes in and, and who goes out. So the state is the framework for the government. But besides that, that that's really doesn't really matter that much. Government and the state, they're pretty much the same thing. So that's what I covered in the first clip and the first half of the second clip. is I explained that there's you and the state, you and the government. But the second part is very, very crucial. What's very, very crucial is you have absolute rights or you have no absolute rights. And that's the key thing, because if you don't have any objective, absolute rights, they can just trample over you. And that's what they're doing to people now. And in this generation, people don't have lost track of what absolute rights they used to have and it's being trampled on because if you don't know what your rights are people can do whatever they want or secondly you can end up selling it for so cheap and that is what's happening but we'll go through that a little bit later that's that's something that i'll be covering but the need to get started at the beginning so once upon a time there was the magna carta and that's by looking at the Magna Carta and understanding what the Magna Carta was about, we can understand what a right is. That there's basically three big things in the Magna Carta. So the very, very first thing with the Magna Carta is there was common law. The second thing is there was equity law. And the third thing is there's due process of law. Now, we should be starting off with common law and then going to equity law and then going to due process of law, but it's going to make a little bit more sense if we go in the reverse. So what happened with due process of law is it means that if the government thinks that you're doing something wrong, they can't just do whatever they want with you. There's due process of law. And what that means is if it's the state saying you are a menace, we need to do something with this guy because he's a menace. I think we need to lock this guy up. Due process of law means that you're not just before the judge and the judge says you pay up. And you're not before the judge where the judge just gives you a sentence. You have due process of law. You have a group of people called the jury. And if the jury says you are guilty, you are guilty. It's the principle is beyond reasonable doubt. If you are a menace to society and the state takes you on, that's what due process of law is. Now, we've also just defined what common law is, but we'll get to that in a minute because it makes a little bit more sense if we define what equity law is because common law is everything that equity law isn't common equity law concerns contract common law concerns everything that's not contract and is a violation to someone else so if i sell you 300 apples for a hundred dollars that's contract if we both make good on us and you moan and groan to the court and say, I'm not happy with the deal, they'll just ignore you. There has to be a contract in the middle of it. 
and it has to be that somebody has not made good of it. Now, let's suppose you say to the judge, these apples are rotten. Okay. In either case, whichever way the judge rules, somebody wins and somebody loses. If he doesn't award you a remedy, then that means your apples are rotten. You lose out of a deal. At the same time, if he awards you the damages, the cost of the apples, it comes out of my pocket. So with equity law, there's only two sides. And either this group wins and the other loses or the other loses and the other wins. So what I'm trying to say here is with equity law, with contract, there's no trial by jury. Because if it was a thing where there were a group of jury trying to check that, okay, yes, these apples were rotten. And it works out that because they don't have enough proof, you lose. With equity law, there's only two sides and one person wins and one person loses. So they try to make it as fair as possible. They don't go beyond reasonable doubt as under common law. Because if they do that, that means the person who's got a claim against you is going to lose out of it. It needs to be 50-50. It needs to be an even chance. It needs to be that the judge listens to both sides and the side that makes the most sense is the side they agree with. And if you have a reasonable amount of evidence, that counts. But with a jury trial, it's a thing of the state on behalf of thousands of people is taking you on. And in that case, before they lock you up, they need to, it needs to be beyond reasonable doubt. So there was common law and there was equity law and that, that was part of the Magna Carta. And what the Magna Carta was saying is as long as you don't harm anybody in these two ways, common law where you harm somebody but the exception is there's no contract equity law is where you don't make good on your contract and as long as you don't do any of those things the government doesn't step in the government only steps in when you have harmed somebody else and the constitution was based on that the first amendment congress shall make no law affecting freedom of speech. There's also the thing about guns. A right was where the government cannot, the government has a limitation. A right, a right to you means the government cannot do that. That's what a right is. So that's what the constitution was based on. The constitution, the Magna Carta, when those were in place, a right meant this is a limitation on the government. But today, today's human rights don't mean the same thing. Now, what has happened is something has changed. I'm going to check to see how much time I've got. Okay, I've got a few seconds left. Okay, something has really, really changed. So, first of all, for those who are in Western nations, what has happened is if you had rights to begin with, we're talking about 300 years ago where the Magna Carta did affect your government. What has happened is people have traded those rights for something else. But if the Magna Carta never ever was applicable to you, that means you never ever had rights because the US Constitution and the Magna Carta have power because they brought it to the government and basically the people said, this is what we want. 